Hey guys, my name is Kane and I'm an anime inspired illustrator and today I'll be explaining to you how I incorporate composition and lighting in my artwork using Clip Studio Paint and XP Pen's brand new Innovator 16 display tablet. The Innovator 16 is designed to be a more lightweight, versatile screen display tablet for on-the-go drawing. It is one of their thinnest display tablets at 9mm with a slick 15.6 matte display for an enhanced visual experience. Like XUPen's other display tablets, the Innovator 16 features high-end specs with some new features such as a touchpad in the middle of the wheel and a sleeker design. You can even customize your tablet with a lanyard or charm for safety or style. Now let's get into the box. Inside you'll find the tablet itself with a protective seal, a stand for your tablet to display on, a sleek looking pen nestled inside cylindrical case, with 8 pen nibs to replace your worn down nibs found on the end of the, end of the case, 3 different adapter converters for traveling, power block itself, a box with a thank you note and setup guide with a handy glove, a cloth to clean your screen, another box with a USB cord and connection cord for power. Now on to the lesson. Lighting, which is the main topic in this video, is an important element which you can use in your work to better your artwork's composition and the atmosphere or mood of the subject. Additionally, light adds intricacy because of the way it behaves on the planes of objects. It creates a variety of shapes, each shape having its own color, value, softness, hardness, and more. In art, having a diverse amount of shapes makes your work more compelling to look at. Keep in mind these are some tips and fundamentals I learned through observation and learning from other artists' resources, which I combined throughout the years to produce a workflow that suits me. This may or may not be beneficial to you, but I hope at least I can teach you some technical tips when it comes to tackling lighting. First, we should talk about the basic types of lighting, and of course we have to think of shadows as well. We have the main source of light that hits the surface of an object directly. Because most common light sources are warm, we tend to choose a warm color to represent the direct light. Opposite of that light, we get the core shadow and cast shadows. The core shadow is the dark value situated against the direct light and is generally our darkest area. So for instance, if you're facing away from the sun, the front half of your body experiences core shadows. And on the ground in front of you, you'll find your cast shadow. That cast shadow is slightly lighter a shadow area that is an outline of the object's shape. From the name, it is casted onto other planes. As you can see from the same example, the shadow outline of you is on the ground. Say hi! We also have reflected lighting, which occurs when light bounces off of other objects and appears on the opposite side of the direct light. This lighting helps blend our objects with the rest of the environment and increases the tone of part of our shadowed planes. As mentioned previously, lighting is a good tool for composition because the contrast can be used to direct our attention to certain areas of our work. When it comes to composition, we always have to have some focal point. The focal point is the main center of attention. We want our audience to see that area first. If we abuse the amount of lighting in our work, we lose the impact of the focal point. I'll be demonstrating these principles in basic demo in Clip Studio Paint. This is generally how I add lighting in my work. Now firstly, because these are an important part of my workflow, I'm going to explain the handy features of layer modes. In Clip Studio Paint, there are 26 different layer modes available. In this tutorial, we will mostly focus on these ones. Multiply will be used to cast our main core shacks. This layer mode takes the colors on the layer set to multiply and multiplies it by the color code of the layers beneath it. Then it divides by 255. So every time it will make things darker. Using white though, however, on multiply will only restore the original color of everything beneath it. It basically doesn't really do anything. The add layer will be used to enhance the brightness of highlights. It basically brightens the colors of the layers beneath to reflect that of the colors on the add layer. Because it increases brightness, Using color on the add layer on top of things that are white will do nothing. Overlay will be used to enhance the luminosity of the edge where the light and shadow meet. Overlay is more complex, but it's essentially a blend of a dark and light layer mode. It's sort of like adding in a translucent film of color on top of other colors. First, we have our base layers, consisting of the colors that are most common on the object. Next, we add a new layer, set it to multiply, and clip it on top of the base. Clipping allows us to color only within our base layer. When choosing a multiply layer, I try to keep it somewhat light on the color square and not too saturated. Color the entirety. 
Then, using the eraser tool, we basically add in the areas we want to have light. Our lights are on the top right, so keeping in mind what we learned, the lighted areas should mainly be on the right of the object. Of course, we have some reflected areas as well. Planes that protrude are areas that we can define with lighting. For example, I added lighting on the nose and her left jawline to define the shape of her face. Now in this part, I'll use a softer brush to lighten some areas of the shadow with reflected light. Lighting is all about having soft and hard edges as mentioned before. This also adds atmosphere to your work. Because Multiply is a blending mode, be careful not to select colors directly from the drawing with the eyedropper. Sometimes I'll keep the original color on the Multiply layer on a blank area to eyedrop or save it on a palette. Take note of the edge where the light meets the shadows. This is where I'll add a softer but more saturated stroke of orange. In art, this helps enhance the appearance of luminosity in the shapes that exist. Next, we add the add layer on top of the multiply layer and clip to the base. This will act as our highlight, enhancing the overall image's contrast. It is important not to abuse this layer, we only add it to the areas that are subject to the direct light. To blend the lines with the rest of the drawing, I add a new layer clipped to the liner and add colors that matches the overall temperature of the drawing and surrounding objects. For this, I chose brownish red to match the skin and her hair color. Lastly, we'll add the overlay layer above everything. Like the add layer, we don't want to overuse it. The overlay illuminates the edge of the lighting and adds half tones to the drawing. I mostly use it for the reflected light and light passing through translucent objects. For instance, the hair. And now we're done. I hope this demo helped you understand my process for lighting. And that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching my video on lighting and composition. And I hope this helped you so you can incorporate it in your artwork as well. Make sure to go check out XPCon's website to see other models of tablets. They have a wide assortment of tablets available that will fit your needs. Additionally, XP Pen tablets are definitely one of the most affordable on the market for those who want to get into digital art and for professionals in the industry as well. I had a great time using the Innovator 16. I've used XP Pen's older models and definitely have seen improvement over the years. Drawing in their tablets is much more comfortable and meets all my needs. I'm mostly used to service tablets and actually somewhat avoided ones with displays, but I found XP Pen tablets to be thoroughly enjoyable and easy to draw with. While I probably won't use this for drawing on the go, I much prefer this new design and slimness. It definitely feels like an upgrade from the previous tablets I've used. 
And thank you to XP Pen for sending me the Innovator 16 to try out. I had a lot of fun using it, and I hope to use it more in the future. So, thank you! Bye!